Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails Rock Tales with me, your most notorious groupie, Alice Rouse, author of this little book right here. These other ones where you can get that all my cool ass merchandise down in that description. So go down, fiddle about like I'm doing because I'm trying to, I'm using my fingers. Fingers are fun. Anyway. I've got a special treat for us today because, you guys, I just bought this little book. I think you guys would really enjoy it. I'll show you in a minute. But I want to say thank you to everybody right now for just being badass, for making this an incredible family, for being open and us just sharing and bonding in a time where separation is the norm. So I'm really happy we can bond here and let music make us one. So... That for that, I am so, so humbly thankful to everybody for being part of this family here. Whether we're talking or not, or I see you or not, or I don't. Because the majority of people here that are watching, I'll see your pictures float up on my stats page and stuff. But that's all I see. So thank you so much for seeing me. You guys truly made the world to me. Humbly from the bottom of my ta -tas. Anyway, speaking of the bottom of my tatas, so I saw this book. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to hold it up. I'd like to have this woman on my podcast on my channel here soon because I think this is a fun book. It's called "The Official Book of Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Lists" by Judy McGuire. Uh, illustrations by Cliff Mott and forward by Odorous Urungus. Ur of Gwar. And we're going to finish off this little guy. Sorry, I started drinking it when I was filming the other episode. And it's a, it's a fizzy drink. And fizzy drinks just make me kind of fizzy myself. So, alright. Everybody, grab your little Monaco Lime Crush with tequilas. Like I said, tequila makes me too friendly if we're out and about. You want to get in my pants? Buy me tequila. Not gonna lie. Anywho. So let me got me. <laughs> Tequila and Long Island iced teas. <laughs> it's true. All right. But so I got I I when I did the uh, uh review on Paul Reese's crap book, The Ox, which is all lies, people. Didn't even ask me about anything how John and I met. So anyway, when I did the review on that book, I held it up and I got demonetized on that so I'm just going to put up a picture right here of this book and a picture of the author as well what she looked like this book came out in 2011 and one of the things I was kind of excited about is I'm in it and I, I'll, I'll address that quote in a minute but these are really fun lists, lists and thank you so much Judy for having a really great sense of humor because it's a fun book. It was only $8.99. I'll put the link down in the description because it's just a good little deal for a fun little read. And it is. It's just a bunch of different lists, but a little few of the lists are different than what we've heard before. So I'm going to start off with the five rockers who allegedly kept it in their pants and one who didn't because I think there's a couple here we know already know about Okay, first one is Mike Monroe. Um, so Mike Monroe is, if you guys don't know, Hanoi Rock, stuff like that. And these are all quotes and stuff by the rockers themselves, some of them. So, okay, one doesn't have to be a sleazeball to be a rock and roller. And I don't like to be conceived as one. You see, I'm happily married with one woman and I never cheat. Even in my years alone, I was never into groupies. But you had a few road wives. Didn't you, Michael Monroe? Cool to you that, you know, once, you, once the ring was on. But just because he didn't sleep with everything in every town as he toured doesn't mean he wasn't into groupies. He had a couple road wives. Ladies, if you're here, down in that description. And he was a pretty boy. Okay. We're not going to hit the ones that we know are wrong. So, yet, yeah, just yet. So, Russell Brand. This is what he says. Ugh, I can't stand Russell Brand. He's such a... He thinks too much of his of himself. And if you've seen the movie Arthur, and you've seen the original with Dudley Moore and the one with Russell Brand, he destroyed it. It was a horrible, horrible remake. So, 
This is Russell Brand. My wife recently explained to me. Yeah, recently you had to have it explained to you because Lord knows what you were doing before. We all know that you were friggin' you were a hoe. You did that shit and admitted it. You know, because you were a hoe, Russell. Still a hoe. For someone else, though. Your mouth. Your mouth is an asshole. But anyway, my wife. Oh, no, I didn't mean it in that way. Like nothing. Nothing's going into his mouth. What's coming out of his mouth is idiotic. Anyway, so Russell Brand says, and this, like I said, this book came out in 2011. So was he married to Katy Perry at the time? My wife recently explained to me, you must be faithful. And I don't have a problem with that. I'm really, really in love. You just can't maraud through life fucking whoever you'd like, which is a shame because I wish I actually could do that. You can't. Living proof. 80s ladies, we did. We did it. You wished it. We had cojones. We did it. And Katie, when you were coming out, I was still doing it. You know? So, okay. That's the compromise. Because she can't do it, so I don't. But that was an interview with The Sun, which... Oh, it looks like he was married to Katy Perry at the time. I don't put any faith in the sun. They've dragged my name through the muds. Okay, Charlie Watts, drummer of uh, Rolling Stone that recently passed away, most recently. Um, we all know he was 100% faithful. I think this is probably the only rocker that I can say was 100% faithful. Okay, what did he have to say? Girls chasing you down the street, screaming, horrible. He hated it. It was quite flattering, I suppose. And... It's fantastic to play to audience audiences that are like that. Whoops. I just keep knocking shit around. For me, that was the whole point of being chased down the street. Playing the drums was all I was ever interested in. The rest of it made me cringe. Which, yeah, we all knew Charlie Watts was faithful. All right. We'll get on to the last one. I'm going to save the best for last. So this one, Bono. Which Bono had a couple road wives. Absolutely. I allegedly, but so Bono, I have a great mate. You know, I have a great friend in Allie. And you know, I like being in her company and you exercise restraint. That's what you do. And you know that, and you know, that's it. But I mean, I'm just, I'm in love. And this is an interview with Larry King. Though there are rumors about his fidelity. Okay. Like I say, rockers always tell you what they want you to hear. And yes, Allie is a great mate and she is a great wife because she understands that and she's forgiving. Let's put it that way. And the last one. Although this person was not married, he did not know his wife when I was with him. Eddie Vedder. Really, Eddie Vedder? We're going to bring that back. <laughs> if you've been with me since the beginning, really, Eddie Vedder? So, Pearl Jam lead singer Eddie Vedder was one of the few rock stars with a reputation of being faithful to his wife. But now he's divorced. His wife report reportedly cheated on him. I slept with him so I can kind of see why. And one of the first women Eddie dated after the breakup was a model. In other words... Eddie's turned into a typical rock star, groupydirtgot.com, which, okay, like I said, this came out in 2011. He ended up marrying that model, but he, I, I, uh, Eddie Vedder was into groupies. Was he faithful to his wife? Possibly. Yeah, absolutely. Could be. Was he, did he refrain from groupies? <laughs> I don't think so. And he really had any better. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. I'm going to move on to a couple more chapters. Ooh, rock stars talk about groupies. This is where I'm at. Groupies talk about rock stars. And I kind of want to explain this one because Alice and Rouse describing the night John Entwistle died. Now, this was taken from an interview I did in 2010 with Glide Magazine. We just talked about that. Um... The thing, so this is Alice Arouse describing the night John Entwistle died in bed with her. 
which I love her sense of humor. I think that's cute. I, I get what she's, what she's doing and I have nothing, no problem with it. I love this. So the thing about the night with John and the morning after, mind you, this is my words, which is when shit hit the fan, so to speak, is if anybody else was in that room, they probably would have stolen stuff and gone straight to the press and made a big debacle out of it, which, you know, that's true. If it wasn't someone that was 17 years into the rock and roll family, things could have gone very, very differently. So, yeah, it could have been a lot of stuff missing out of that room. And someone not, not caring about the human being he was off stage like I did. So I was 17 years into my groupie life at the time. So I was integrated into the rock and roll family. I don't want this to sound egotistical, but he could have, could not have gone with a better woman because I know how to keep the privacy. I didn't think about touching anything in the room except for the body and doing mouth to mouth. So that's not exactly how I said things, but that's just how it was printed. So like I said, that was not egotistical. That was, you know, everybody being glad and everybody surrounding the situation. So I was still, you know, because other people said this, I'm glad that he went with someone that he knew and trusted and cared and that actually cared about him. So they knew I was not going to exploit the situation or anything like that. So that's kind of where, like I said, it wasn't said ex in that exact words, but it was said of, do you regret being with John that? No, I don't. And that's the contents it was in. Okay, so we're going to read a couple extra of these. So, oh, uber groupie sweet Connie. Sweet, sweet Connie. I love her. And who comes, and this is her words, and who comes into the back lounge? Neil fucking Diamond. I love her telling this story. Neil looks me up and down and nods her approval because a lot of people don't realize Sweet Connie had a fucking rocking body. Like, I saw her in her bra and underwear when I first went, you know, met The Who in 1989 backstage in Boulder. Yeah. She was, I happened to walk into the hotel room she was in and she was just getting ready. And I was like, dang girl. She had a rockin' motherfucking body. No doubt. Okay, so then he gets high with us and disappears backstage. I told you Neil Diamond was used to smoke. He's 420 friendly. A few minutes later, his manager says he wants to see me in his dressing room. So I knocked on the door and there's Neil waiting for me in his blue robe. And I didn't just him. There was hoo ha too. So they went all the way, not just the third base. They went all the way home and around a couple more times, probably. Because like I said, Connie was actually a very pretty woman when she was put together. And when she was undressed, she had a rocking body. I, like I said, I saw it. Okay. So, oh, here's one. I don't know who Jessica Schof is. ex groupie Jessica Schof expounding the, on the less glam aspects of groupiedom. Ladies, we know. Maybe he says it's not glamorous. Ooh. A lot of them can be assholes. It's like messing around with chicks is something to do because they're bored and out of town. So it's like, let's bring her out on the bus and stick drumsticks up her back door. That's, ladies and gentlemen, what in rock and roll in the 80s was known as a back lounge Betty. Ramp Rats did that too, but we'll get into that another time. Okay, let's see. Kareen Superhead Steffens, groupie and author. Now, she's a rap groupie, I believe, which I love. This. She's like, I'm a genius. I am a genius. I think I've developed a product that people want, and it's in supply and demand. And it's obviously good at that. And I'm obviously good at that thus far. So thank God for that. And, you know, I think people are kind of taking that out of context because... That may be what kind of gets these guys' attention, but I think her personality is what keeps them coming back. Not the act itself, but who she is as a person. Because to keep a rocker coming back, it's not necessarily about how good you are on your back or knees. It's about the chemistry that got you there when it's not in a pinch. You know, so, okay, let's see what else we've got in here. Do, 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 do. The practical drug user. 
This is hilarious. Okay, this one cracked me up, you guys. Like I said, this is such a fun little story or fun little book because, like I said, she just compiled all these different stories and stuff. Okay, Keith Richards' 12-step guide to how the very wealthy world-traveling superstar junkie gets his fix in New York City. Number one, call your dealer ahead of time from London and arrange for him to meet you at the Plaza Hotel. Yeah. Yeah, you tend to, you know, make plans ahead of time. So, so far, spot on. Number two, make certain you're wearing a smart hat, though if you're a woman, or corsage would work. And use the needle from a fresh hypodermic to affix feather to a natty hat band. Keith, the fuck? This was pre-HIV, pre-80s. I hope. So, okay. A fresh hypodermic, the needle from a fresh... Okay. So, I'll be the guy in the hat with the feather. You're Keith fucking Richards. Do you really need that? Please. So, number three. Get high before boarding. Double check you haven't forgotten a lump of hash or stray roach in any of your pockets. Good advice. That is good advice. I have to say that. That is very good advice, Keith. Yes, I, I can agree with that. Number four, pass through customs, ignoring the agent's side eye, and cheerfully sign autographs for adoring fans. They can be a pretty good cover sometimes to get you out of being searched. That is a good one. Now we just all need to hire a pack of adoring fans. <laughs> okay? So, all right. Number five, check into hotel, meet dealer, and complete cash transaction. Not necessarily in that order. God, sorry, you guys. I just keep hitting this. There we go. There we go. Okay. Let me actually pause. Okay. Sorry about that. Number six. In order exactly one overpriced cup of room service coffee. Dump the coffee down the toilet. Trash the milk and sugar. Leave the cup up. Leave the cup and saucer outside your door. The only reason you ordered a 12-buck cup, cup of joe was for the teaspoon you'll need for cooking. Oh, Judy, I'm so glad you discovered this list. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Realize that while you have the needle, you don't have a barrel to hold the stuffs. Discover that the Plaza Hotel is across the street from the world's greatest toast toy store, FOA Schwartz. Dodge fans, get a cart and start filling it with teddy bears, remote control cars, and other sundry beard toys as you head to the third floor to get what you came for, a little plastic doctor kit. So this is something he did. Basically, he didn't have a full apparatus to do what he needed with the H stuff. And he went to look for a toy doctor kit at F.A. Okay, sorry guys. I kind of got lost. I had to cut some part out of the other, out of this video. So, because I thought I was pressing pause and I wasn't. And I had a snot attack. But anyway. So, okay. Let's see. David Bowie. Let's see. Now, this one I think we should go. I So, yeah. Keith, Keith Richards. Definitely an interesting little story there. So, Noel Gallagher of Oasis, which I'm excited to kind of see them coming. I look at Chris Martin, who says he's never taken drugs in his life, and I think he is an idiot. Doing drugs is the most beautiful thing about being in a rock band. Up until 1998, I must have spent a million pounds on drugs. Then I stopped because it is bad for your health, brain, life, and for people around you. But while you use them, except for the H which kills people and which I never tried, as you lots would say. Mama mia. So, and that was a 2009 interview. Because, I mean, I think we've all kind of had our fun moments doing stuff like that. Let's see, what else do we have here? Do, 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 do. I've got some pages marked. Oh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Oh, 10 reasons why you should only talk to the press while you're sober. There's a good one. Okay. Because you forget what you said, then freak out when it gets printed. When we, we went on a binge, we did a lot of drugs. We got pills, and then we went to Alphabet City. So this must be Kurt Cobain. Okay. 
and Kurt wore a hat. I wore a hat, and we co we copped some dope. Then we got high, went to Saturday Night Live. After that, I did H for a couple months. Courtney Love on her in her infamous Vanity Fair interview. That was boring. Was Courtney Love ever sober enough in any interview? Huh? I don't think so. All right, who's this? Amy Winehouse. Because nobody believes you lost consciousness several times during one interview due to exhaustion. No, Amy, we do not. Oh, my gosh. God love you, girl. I'm a really big drinker. You don't say. I used to be here for the pub. I used to be there before the pub opened, banging on the door. Amy Winehouse in an interview with Blender, November 2007. Over the course of this interview, she passes out several times, and her management tries to blame it on overexertion. We do better. Okay. Here's another one. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Because sometimes it's funny, and you're not known for your sense of humor. You said a little while ago that you sing mainly about drugs. Sometimes. Why do you do this? Because I think the government is plotting against me. You like singing about drugs. Is this because you like taking drugs yourself? No, it's because I can't carry when I go through customs and I figure someone in the audience. You want people to take drugs themselves? Oh yeah, I want them to take drugs. Why is this? Because it's better than Monopoly. Lou Reed. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Oh, because YouTube means nobody will ever forget. Isn't that the truth? James Brown's loony drunken appearance on Sonya Live in L.A. was one of the all-time craziest cautionary tales. The day after he was sprung from jail for assaulting his wife, he got liquored up and decided live TV was the way to go. You know, to each their own, I guess. Sonya, what are you going... Or this is Sonya talking... What are you going to say when your fans ask you some questions about hitting your wife with a lead pipe? The King of Soul responded. I'm going to say, I feel good. Papa got a new bag. It's a man's world. Jumps up and throws a few hip thrusts at the camera. Probably not the best response. I'm kind of guessing that his lawyers were scrambling a little after that. I don't know. Just a guess. Okay. Because you'll probably blow all your money in, on booze and hookers and wind up in celebrity rehab se season five anyway. That's Sebastian Bach, who has, who has been wasted on camera too many times to count. One classic TMZ clip shows him sw swilling from a bottle of Chianti, taking a hit off a joint, and then barking at the camera. They ask me every season. I'm not interested in making bad art. Celebrity rehab with Drew, Dr. Drew is out of control. That show sucks. That guy's a quack. <laughs> Was he on Celebrity Rehab? Tell me in the comments. Okay. What is this list? Hold on. There was a reason. Oh, this is different. The different things that cocaine or the drugs do to you. Okay, now, if anybody who's watched my, one of my earlier episodes about... Kip Wigger, how I got to Kip Wigger, we started out in a room partying with Ozzy, who gave us black beauties, which I never took before or since. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, black beauties and speed, the most insane drug of them all. It's probably the most quickly, emotionally, and physically destructive th destructive drug there is. The only reason I dabbled in it was because it was all right for me. Who is this talking? Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, Richard Manitoba's Nine Greatest Drugs Ever in Descending Order. Not sure who that is. But okay. Let's see. Cocaine gives you a mediocre buzz, costs a lot of money, and makes you completely socially annoying. That's true. And you get the problems with the wet noodles. However, when taken intravenously, it would move way up the list. Unfortunately, you need to keep shooting it every five minutes. However, when, when mixed with heroin, it's a speedball. It's just about the most intense eye you can get. Snorted, it just gets caught in your nose hair. Also, some of the creepiest people in Hollywood and the entertainment industry use it. Dirty old man use cocaine. 
Sorry, I had to stop and sneeze. Fuck my allergies, ma'am. Also, some of the creepiest people in the Hollywood and the entertainment industry use it. Dirty old men use cocaine to get young girls, which makes it even lamer. Kim Fowler, Rodney Bingenheim. Rodney Bingenheimer, anybody? Yeah. Psychedelics. Okay, so that one's kind of, that one's okay. But like I said, there's a lot of really cool um, lists in here. You know, it talks about... Rock stars talking about groupies. Groupies talking about rock stars. I mean, just a lot of really cool different band names. Um, songs about self-love. So she kind of really hits on a lot of really cool little fun. Like I said, she does it with a good sense of humor. So, you know, if... if and the, and the drawings are fun. Like, everything about this book is a lot of fun. Because it's approached very, very well. What was that about Joe Jackson? Oh, what is this? What is this? Wait, what was this chapter? Random. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll leave that for you guys to check it out. And I'll read some more from this book another time. But tell me what you guys think. Like I said, the link to this book is down in the description. It's just a fun little book to have. You could read it pretty quickly. Like I said, the way she approaches it with a sense of humor and the illustrations that she chose to go with it are just a lot of fun. The guys from Gore who did the um, prologue. Absolutely, that's that really does set the tone for it because they're a bunch of crazy guys, a lot of fun, don't take themselves seriously, and I think she did a really great job with this book. So, like I said, I'll probably read some more out of it, maybe get her on to, you know, talk to her about this book because, woohoo, it is, it's funny. I Like I said, I like the way she approaches it. She found some of the funniest quotes and really, really took it to, to the limit with it in a good way, so... But I got it, got it down in the description. Go read it, you guys. Have fun with it. And tell me what you think. Tell me of other little things that you may know that should have gone in this book. That Because like I said, this is 2011 that this came out. So this is 13 years ago. A lot of things have happened since then. So tell me down in the in the comments, you guys. And you guys, thank you to everybody who made it to the end of this episode. Sorry, I kept my allergies were so bad. I had to cut some of this because I thought I was on pause blowing my nose and shit and it's just it was a really hard day filming for me today so I'm sorry <laughs> if you didn't like this episode but but like the book like I said I don't want to show okay sorry you guys really truly like I've been ugh, just so bad like with all this construction going on the dirt everything is so kicked up and it's just infiltrating every fucking thing so sorry about the allergies, the stuffy nose this time. And thank you guys to get to the end of this episode because I know it's probably a rough one. <laughs> it was for me. So thank you so much, you guys. And for everybody who's just hanging out that's just discovering me, hey, welcome to the family, you guys. Go down, comment, become part of the conversation. Because I love, I love the healthy conversations. I love that we can all kind of just joke and have conversations and talk and just really, really bond with each other over the music that we all love. So thank you guys for so much for all that here. And if you, like I said, if you're just lurking about, hit that subscribe, hit the share. Let's get me out there because we're having a lot of fun here. And hit my bells. It's even more fun. Where's, where is he? Honey, no I'm kidding. All right, everybody. Cheers, Biggie here. We'll see you next time.